of our Lord, let's now take a few moments to greet and welcome those around.
bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these put on love, that is, the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord.
There's also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Hugh, the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then a widow until she was 48. Or I should say, 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions, the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a big difference between 48 and 84. I mean, it was 48 at 8 o'clock. They didn't notice. I did this morning. Merry Christmas. The young couple invited their aged pastor for a Sunday dinner. While they were in the kitchen preparing the meal, the minister asked their son what they were having. Goat, the little boy replied. Goat, replied the startled pastor. Are you sure about that? Yes, said the boy. On the drive back from church, I heard mom and dad say, Remember, we're having no goat for dinner tonight. <laughs> I better be careful, I'll be going one day. You know, today's message is about honor, respect, and the story you just told, and the joke I just told is anything. But but I don't respect. But if we look at uh, uh, if we look at the book of Sirach, Sirach is all about honor and respect. Sirach's all about wisdom. You know, knowledge, experience, and good judgment. Knowledge, experience, and good judgment. Sirach, as we heard the first reading, is all about wisdom, making good decisions. Now. And so I think that's a real uh, important lesson to learn today because in the reading, it calls each member of the household to develop concern, respect. And it's missing from our leadership in this country, at least the other one. No matter what your differences are, you always take the high road, especially as a leader. And I know, because there are things when I was a pastor that I don't want to tell them about that, but you don't, you don't benefit anything from it. There's no good that comes out of it. You have to take the high road. You be honorable. You be respectful of other people, whether they agree or not. In healthy relationships, you can agree to disagree, honorably, honorably, and respectfully. You don't have to people in the mud all the time. And I really think that's what Sirach's point was about. The whole, the whole book, if you look at all the wisdom books, it's about getting the tools to have better relationships with husbands and wives and parents and children and young and old and rich and poor. Because it ultimately leads to improvement in the reference pitting to God. And so the author desires right relationship. And so, and that's where justice comes in. Are we living in right relationship one another? It doesn't, right relationship doesn't mean you're gonna agree or you're gonna be a patsy or you're gonna go along with everything. That just, it, it's, I'm talking about healthy relationships are right relationships. Agree where you agree. You can disagree where you disagree. Listen to one another. 
make your points. And then we find they have more in common than we don't. One of the ways I learned about God was the following is a very, very young boy. In addition to what my parents taught me. On my honor, on my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey this God law. To help, to help other people at all times. To keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. What do you learn on? Well, we learn in Boy Scouts, we learn respect for one another. Not only for our leaders, but for fellow scouts. I always really learn to respect, respect your adults, even if you don't understand. Right? Respect your grandmother, respect your grandfather, help your grandmother. The thing I had a hard time with was carrying that darn purse all the time. <laughs> Hold your grandmother's purse, right? Show her respect. She can't do it. She's getting up in years. She's got to walk. That's how I respect helping one another out. Yesterday, I was, uh, I sit around and I'm having a dance in the and took Dan Mercer to shot him. And uh, Dan's doing great. He says, if you keep him in prison, you might need to have a heart, heart valve replacement in the next month or two. And it's been, it's been kind of tricky. So I said, let's go shot him. So he went to the shot him. So we had to get a bunch of things. And as we're going along, I'm trying to, you know, just trying to keep an eye on He's 89, he's doing great, he drives, but still, you, you want to watch out for your parents. You told Donna to respect your parents. So he wanted to go get lottery tickets. So, and I never buy a lottery tickets. I don't know anything about it. So they have those machines, you know, before you, it's almost like the old soda machine, and you press all the buttons. And he wanted to get three of them, he's trying to figure it out. And you know, when you get up in here, you're, you're not speedy quick about it. And there was somebody behind him who I could tell was really antsy fancy. And so I'm thinking, oh, please, don't, don't say anything to my dad. <laughs> and they did it, and I just tried to place it. And I thought to myself, you're going to be that age one day, and other people are nice to you. <laughs> but we have to remember, not only to, to, to people that are seniors, but to everybody. And what do you know, as we look at the Holy Family, the Holy Family is a of honor and respect. And we look to the Holy Family to help us be respectful and honorable in our families. You know, and there, there's just so much division. Doesn't it? Don't you get tired of it? It just wears you down. You know, this one don't like this one. This one. Oh, come on. Let's just, let's have a big old fight. Get over it. Agree to disagree. Now let's, let's hug and make up. That's what we did in our family. I had a fight with the sisters. Okay. And my father would say, Hug one another. And then you know what he would say? It was crazy. He would say, tell your sister you love her. No. <laughs> tell your sister you love her. Okay, I love you. Tell your brother you love her. I love you. Make up. Be nice to one another. Work out your differences. That's, being, that's an example of being an honorable. What's, what, is, what are those relationships? But what's that one relationship as we go into the new year that you got to say, God, they drive me nuts. I need divine intervention because honor and respect, it's not based on whether the person earns it or not. See, we, and culturally, we look at it that way. No. Honor and respect is, it reflects more of us as people. If you're not a respectful and honorable person, it reflects more of you than anybody else. So it's all about beginning in the heart. So, what's that relationship or relationship? Yeah, I really. Lord, when I go up to this altar to receive your holy communion, I really need divine intervention just to be respectful and be honorable because that's who I am. It's not about whether they whether they drive me crazy or not. It's who I am, who you've made me all. So pray for that. Pray for that when you receive, pray for that grace. When you receive the words of, of Sarah, pray for that. You know, so Paul talks about putting on love. How about, Lord, help me put on honor and respect as part of my character. Right? Honor and respect. You know, we put a lot of things on. That's one thing that's important. Ways to be respectful. Listen and be present. As I get older, I, I really see the value of listening more now than ever. When I was younger, I would like to open up my mouth and talk. You know, at meetings and stuff. And it's really interesting. Listen and provide you more than you realize. Number two, be thoughtful about others' feelings. Number three, acknowledge others and say 
thank you. I think we kind of lost that a bit. Address mistakes with kindness. Make decisions based on what's right. Not who you like, what's right, what's honorable. We need to be, we need to grow. It's a development of being an honorable person and respect. It's a development. It just isn't, you just can't go up to it. Lord, give me the grace that I may develop it to be that respectful and honorable person you call me into. And think of that relationship or relationships as we prepare to go into the new year where we really need to say, okay, I need to be the honorable, respectful person. Maybe they're not, maybe they are. It doesn't matter. Because one day we're going to stand before the Lord and the Lord's going to say, you love him. Yes, Lord, I strive to love you. Went off the path a few times, but I strive to love you with all my heart, my soul, and my neighbor as myself. As we strive to develop and grow into love and honor and respect, let's proclaim what we strive to believe in as Roman Catholics. I believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things visible and invisible. I believe in one of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Lord and Father of the Lord Jesus, God of God, light of light, God of God, light of light, God of God, light of light, God of God, God of God, As we gather as a Christmas pe people, let us offer up our many prayers for people throughout the world who are in need of peace and healing in our country, for unity, and our community of faith to grow in honor and respect. For the church, that we treat our sisters and brothers with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience as we strive to build God's kingdom throughout the entire human family. We pray. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all military, police, firefighters, and first responders, may they be kept safe from all harm as they serve and protect us. We pray. The Lord, hear our prayer. For, nation, for the leaders of nations, that they may respect the bond of individual families, as well as foster the unity of the human family across nations and cultures, we pray. O Lord, hear our prayer. That we may become ever more the sanctuary of life, where all are welcome as a gift, we pray. O Lord, hear our prayer. For parents of babies, children, and teens, that they may exercise patience as they raise their children with love and kindness, we pray. O Lord, hear our prayer. For healing and hope for parents who have lost a child, we pray. O Lord, hear our prayer. That members of this community may reach out to those without immediate family and offer their love and time and give witness to the bond we share with Christ, we pray. O Lord, hear our prayer. For all whom we remember today at Mass, especially St. Catherine's parishioners, Benny. The Zikowski, Marcella Brown, Elsie Heidel, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially Chet Wall, Salama Sullivan, Bernie Gerhardt, and Father Ed Stokas, 
and all those listed in our parish bulletin, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our dearly departed loved ones, especially Daniel Cribalone, Victor Edlinskis, uh, Jose Estella, that they may rest in the peace of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for the Holy Family who can really show us how to honor and respect one another, as you have, as we offer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please remember to place your donation in the acrylic boxes located in the back of the church. Thank you for your continued generosity.
you are indeed holy, O Lord. The font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the two fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks from him. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Glory to God. I believe that you should turn to my reward. My only saving word for my soul shall be.
Christmas season. If you announce this, we have the 2021 calendars the Baptist Church, and also the 2021 Mass Club is now open for your intentions, both living and deceased. If you have not yet made your special Christmas gift to St. Catherine Parish, extra envelopes are in the Baptist Church. Your special gift is even more needed this year during COVID-19 because of reduced attendance at Mass. Our regular Mass schedule reminder is as follows. So we have on Saturday at 4 o'clock, and then we have on Sunday, we have the 8 o'clock Simple Mass, the 9.30 and the 11.30. And both the 9.30 and 11.30 are streamed in the parking lot, and this particular mass is also uh, videoed and being streamed on uh, Facebook Live. And the rectory office will be closed on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. We look forward to celebrating New Year's with you, which is the feast of Mary, the Mother of God, and the World Day of Prayer for Peace and a Holy Day. Thursday, New Year's Eve, we will have an anticipated Mass at 4 p.m. And then on Friday, January 1st, we will have an 8.30 and 10 a.m. Mass. Let us pray. Bring those who refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. Christ our Lord. Amen. If you want to be successful in the world, strive to be a person of honor and respect. You know, and I really think that's the message of the Holy Family, the message of uh, the reading from Sarah. It's right relationships. Right relationships is with honor and respect. The peace of the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son.